<laughs> they are already enjoying the conference. So I, I hope uh, when everybody comes, they will know the Lord. They are enjoying the word already. They are eating the live in direct. So by the time everybody comes, they will see them very strong and ready to go. I welcome all the ministers in the house, Evangelist Victoria. I think I saw Sister Odion, Sister Felicia, Auntie Jovita. Although I'm not seeing because I'm not having my laptop today. Others I'm not <clears throat> I'm not seeing. I think Kemkoma Tinashe is there, Kumata Dewa is there. I greet you and welcome you all in the name of the Lord. Today I want us to talk about something that we all know about, but something just bring uh, I want us to bring something that is very relevant in today's world. I will take us to the book of Exodus, chapter 32. The book of Exodus, I will just read a small part so that we can be enjoying together as we are working on this journey. Exodus, chapter 32. I'm already seeing most of the brethren already in Austria. We are looking forward to seeing. Praise the Lord. Exodus chapter 32. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as, this, for as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of Egypt, out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings, which were in, the, in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron. Verse 4, And he received them at their hand, and fashioned it with a graving tool, after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Praise the Lord. I think the rest of the story is very familiar. These people were brought out by the Lord God out of the land of Egypt, where they were over 400 years in bondage and slavery. When God sent Moses to Pharaoh to say, let my people go so that they can save me. They knew God, they had crossed the Red Sea already. After crossing the Red Sea, through the power of God, they saw Pharaoh perishing. They saw the first bones of the Egyptians die. And yet, unwittingly, they asked Aaron, to make a God, to make say, these be thy God. A powerful God took you out of Egypt. And now we are making a God that you make with your own hands that will be standing on one place. Mm -hmm. I do not know whether we call it wisdom. I do not know whether we call it wisdom. Do you think the God that you make with your own hands will be more powerful than, the, <laughs> than even yourself? This is something that you make and sit there. If you don't move it, it's like Dagon in the first Kings chapter five, verse one to five. It was just standing there and it's just standing there. So when you're standing there, what does it mean? I want, I want us to see, I'm giving out to the pastors of today. Let us look at Moses. Let us look at Moses. Moses went up. Moses went up into the mountain to meet with the Lord, to meet with God. People thought, according to their estimation, he had delayed only 40 days. They say he has delayed. They say, hey, Aaron. Aaron is a person who was anointed by Aaron. He was so by Moses. He was ordained by Moses. So he knew very well 
that there is a God, the God that has called him, the God that has ordained him. He said, can you, make, can you give me? I want to show you the type of pastors we have today. Picture yourself as Moses playing the drama of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ said, I am going up to prepare a place for you. I will come back and take you. And today, who is the Aaron? The Lord, we think he is working with this minister of God. Little did he know he is working with somebody who's got his own agenda. Aaron knew very well, this is a man that God has ordained as a priest. And he said, no, give me those earrings. Nobody knew because there was no profession of Aaron which was mentioned in the Bible. But now we are seeing he's a goldsmith. You are somebody with this expertise. We didn't know many of the pastors today are switch talkers. Enticing words of wisdom. The Lord, these people, they've become the scoffers. They have become the scoffers of today. This is what has brought now this gospel of prosperity. The gospel of the stomach. The gospel of um, the, the, the gospel of the, um, the perishable gospel or the gospel of Obono, where people are thinking about their stomach. The Lord wonders, put your treasure in heaven where there is no moth. Nothing is going to happen to your treasure if you invest it in heaven. Now we've seen people are being asked to put a seed, to sow a seed. I'll ask a question I've asked you several times. Where I'm invited to talk, I talk without fear or favor. Because there is nothing nobody can do about it. You just speak the truth and let everybody know you are speaking the truth. If we are called of God and we start preaching about money, how much money did we give the Lord Jesus Christ to come here? How much money did we send to, the, to heaven for God to send our Lord Jesus Christ? And now we are teaching people to hate God. We are now teaching people to hate God. Because God never promised anything. I'm coming as an oracle of God. Probably as a child of the devil. Because God did not ask me. He said, go, go here and preach the word. Take the word to the four corners of the earth. We are not looking for money. We are not looking for gifts. Our hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. As Moses went up to the mountain, by their own estimation, said, this man, maybe something happened to him. Can you make us another God? Aaron is one person. That's where the Levites, the children of the Levites, this is the priesthood which was replaced by the order of the Melchizedek. So instead of saying, no, I will have no part in this thing. I have known this God. He has ordained me. I will wait for my Ogamosis even though Moses was younger, but the one who ordains, the one who lays hand upon you is the one that the Bible says is in terms of seniority. He could have waited for his ogre. Moses, I will wait for you. Moses had gone up with Joshua, even though Joshua had remained a distance. This man chose, say, what do you have? Now you come. Pastor, the Lord is delaying in coming. I need to get a house. I need to get that. That's when come this gospel of seeding. Will you give something to the Lord Jesus? But for you, those that are in foreign countries, how much did you pay to be in that foreign country? Those that are waking up alive today, how much did you pay? Those that went to school, how much did you seed to pass your examination to get a good job? I want you to see the cruelty of this gospel. This is what Apostle Paul said, another gospel. I'll walk us through to the first book of 
to the first Galatians chapter one. I'll start from verse six. First Galatians chapter one, verse six. I'll end up with 10. I will read in Jesus' name. I want to show us something. As I'm walking through, I want us to see which God are you believing in. Is it this calf that becomes your God? Is it this calf that wake you up in the morning? I want us to see something. So that when we finish this small ministration, you will be able to see where you stand with God. I will read in Jesus' name. Galatians chapter 1 from verse 6 to 10. That called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Now it has come. Perversion is a corruption. It's a mischaracterization, misrepresentation, mis misrepresentation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so say I now again, if any man preach an, any other gospel unto you than that you have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be a servant of Christ. So the message is very clear. The Lord Jesus Christ did not preach about prosperity. The prophets of the old did not come and preach about prosperity. From the book of Malachi to the first book of um, Matthew, to the book of Matthew, about 465 years, where the Lord was quiet. We have never heard any other gospel. The silence was broken by John the Baptist. When he came, he said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. That was the message, repentance. Live a holy life, for without holiness, no one shall see the face of the Lord. So where does this, how did this perversion come in? People have, have heard each ears. We are being answered according to the last in our heart because they've been made to believe that a car is a hope of a christian a job is a hope of a christian this is a perversion apostle paul in the book of mm -hmm. romans chapter 8 i think 24 when he was asking or first corinthians chapter 2 verse um nine i'm not sure i'll check it for us when he was asking the hope when God gives hope, your hope is not of something that is seen. Hope and faith, they are literally one word. Without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. So if God has given us hope, my hope is one day I'll meet before my Savior, before my God, before my Father. I'll meet and say, ah, Sister K, we are joined finally. I'll meet Apostle Paul. I'll meet all the prophets of the old. I'll meet our father, Adam. I'll meet Father Abraham. This is my hope. This is the hope that I'm going to meet the saints of the old. That the time when we lived in, it was a very trying time, but we managed and held on to the end. This is the hope in which we have. If your hope is in a job, what about what that company um, gets in concourse? Um, I don't know the English word. Concourse, when a company gets brought Somebody can help me with the English word. If the company gets broke, no money, insolvency. If a company goes into insolvency, they have no money, your hope is gone, your hope is finished. Case a disease that trusted in humankind. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 4. As long as you put your hope on a human being, you are cursed. The Bible says, cursed be you. Why are we bankruptcy? Thank you, Auntie. Bankruptcy. So if this company fails now, because that's where your hope is, even if that company goes broke, my hope is not in the company, my hope is in God. If my company gets broke or gets sold, I'll look for another job because my, comp my hope is not in the company. It's good that I'm working there. But if the doors are closed, the Lord will open one for me. That is the hope that I have, that we serve a living God. 
a God who can open a way for me because it was not of my own choosing that this company is going to shut down. So now we have changed the gospel. The God that has taken us out of Egypt from bondage, you and I know the kind of life that we have lived before. Every one of us we have been taken. Some of us, oh, we can write books of how we lived our lives. It never glorified God. I lived as a scoffer. So when I talk about scoffers, I speak with great authority because I lived that life. That's why Apostle Paul used to go in the synagogues arguing with them because it was the, it was his, it, they came from the same line. So he was happy to engage, to engage them. It's only now he was playing for a different team. He was on Jesus Christ's team, not on the scoffers' team. The people who believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is taking long to come. The Lord is delaying his coming because of you and me, that we must make our ways right. He is not, Moses is not delayed from coming. I want you to picture Moses as a type of Christ. All the characters that we see in the Bible, they just reflect Christ to a certain extent. But because they are human, that way they fail. So these coffers today, I'll go on in the Bible verses which talks about the scoffers. They are now saying it was promised 2,000 ago that 2,000 years ago that he is coming. 2,000 ago they said he's coming. My great grandfather was told the same thing. The tenth one was told told the same thing. He is coming. Behold, I'm coming soon. Soon, when he talks, when God speaks, he speaks in heavenly language, which we may not understand. At close to 50 years, this is about seven minutes in heaven. So when it's soon, it can be half, half it can be an hour or two. Which will how many days? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I was bringing in fresh air for Sister Lavet. She, she was getting a little bit uncomfortable. Praise the Lord. So, brethren, we want to talk about the scoffers. People who say the Lord Jesus Christ is not coming soon. A fool said there's no God in his heart. If you ask me, how do I see things that are in your heart? According to English, they told us, in English we are taught that action speaks louder than words. So that's how I can define a fool. Because if you tell me, uh, how will I define, how will I know when you live your life like this, not tomorrow? There is an incident which has happened here in Innsbruck where we live. A sister has died. A sister passed away suddenly. Complete of a headache. Nobody knew. They said, ah, she was a nice person, nice according to human beings. Nice according to human beings. Are you being nice to God? It's good that people can spend the whole night, ah, this one was a good person. When God said, depart from me. We are talking about eternity. We are talking about eternity. Our job as ministers, as pastors, as shepherds, is to prepare the way for the coming of the Lord. Is to prepare the ship. If people start clapping hands for my gospel, I know I've missed it. I'm on the broad road. Then I know something is wrong somewhere. When I finish ministering, you should start crying for your soul. Ha! This man, why is he bringing this thing? That's how it's supposed to be. That's how the gospel is supposed to be. People were killed because of this gospel. People were beaten up because of this gospel. People lost their jobs because of this gospel. People lost their homes. Their marriages were broken because of this gospel. There is a price to be paid. There is a price to be paid. So we cannot come and say people are clapping hands. How will you clap hands if I'm pointing your sins now? I am pointing out your sins. You are living a shameful life. You are a scoffer. And you come and you are clapping hands. You are smiling. Smiling for what? If you drop dead today, where are you going? Can somebody follow me to the first book of a uh, second book of Peter, chapter three? First book of Peter. 
I'll read in Jesus' name. Second book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 3. Knowing this first, that they shall come last in the, in the last days, scoffers walking after their own last. Four, saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were since beginning the, the beginning of the creation. Oh, for this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and earth standing out of the water and in the water. I will not proceed much from this, this cough pass. Where is the promise of the Lord Jesus Christ coming? I have a friend who is a minister of God. He told me, when is he coming? They, told, they said that 2,000 years ago. I said, yes, they said it. But do you know that tomorrow are you going to wake up? I said, it is good that you are raising that. All that stupidity that we say, me, I'm going to ask God. I'm going to ask. When you meet the Holy God, the holy consuming fire, someone in Revelations was crying, saying, let the, let the mountains fall on us fall on us because of his holiness, because of his righteousness. And you think you can send before God. We don't have a God who's questioned. God is not a democrat. If you want to question, probably you question the devil, if you're following the devil. This message is for those that are coming into, for those that will hear at some point in time, for those that are sitting on the fence. There is no sitting on the fence. Remember the Lord Jesus Christ when he was visiting the seven churches, he said, I would rather have you cold or hot. There is no in-between. He cannot come and say, me, I play rock and roll in church. We don't have a Christian prostitute. There is nothing like that. There is nothing. These are the things the scoffers have allowed in the church today. When I mean scoffers, pastors included. Those that are called of the devil. They are not preparing the children of God. There are people who love God. But they are being trapped because of this doctrine, spiritual bondage because of this doctrine. They are like these Sele white coming churches. Every time they must see something bad is coming. Oh, you must, uh, you need milk. Uh, you need egg. You go, you finish. You didn't do this. They are only seeing the bed. What type of a spirit will be seeing only the bed? Brethren, there is no precedence of anybody praying with, for any, with milk. What milk? What even water? You are now given a holy water. Like this, you come and say, ah, this is your bottle. So your hope is being removed from the Lord Jesus Christ into a small, useless bottle. God can heal you because he loves you. Not that the bottle has got any significance to your Christianity. You are building your own self a cow. Exodus chapter 32. You are building a cow from your money that does not move. Something that you can pray to. Brethren, I want us to think a little bit deeper. I want us to think a little bit deeper. How can somebody who is sensible make a God that you move like a wardrobe from point A to point B? If this your God is so foolish that you have got to make food for him, why don't you come to the living God? And I've seen Christians I have, have happily joined the bandwagon of foolishness or probably they were we are deceived to think they are Christian when they are not. What can the righteous do if the foundations be destroyed? What can the righteous do if the foundations be destroyed? We need to understand, brethren. It is very important for all of us. When we come unto the Lord, we are coming, we are not coming for any promise. Unless God is the builder, we are building it in vain. If any man is building, say, ah, this is my church, this is my ministry, let them go and die for their own people. There's only one person who qualifies, who meets that criteria. So you cannot come and say, I have got people. I've heard many, many pastors claiming they took my people. They took my people. Did you go to the cross for anybody? It is absolute rubbish. I have debated with the pastors. They want to say, ah, these were my people. God said, take those people. Instead of fighting for the souls, we are fighting to say, we are holding them in bridge. Nimrodic type of pastors. You gather people unto yourselves, not unto the Lord Jesus Christ.
that's why when you hear children of God speaking now, they speak more about the man of God than the Lord Jesus Christ. Who is the example? Oh, our pastor, oh, our brother. He did this, he did that. It's not what I did. It's what he did that you have got your life today. I did not do anything. And as ministers of God, we must come to, to, an, to a level where we say, stop it right there. Hold it right there. All honor and glory belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. What happens if you don't call me uh, the very right reverend, the very senior minister, the very blessed man of God, all those titles, useless titles. It's not about titles. It's good if God gives you. I would rather respect my calling than the title you give me. I would rather be known as a Christian in heaven than a pastor on earth. You don't have heaven to offer. So if you come and be giving me all those sweet, sweet, sweet names, Brethren, we are not going anywhere. Why are we being foolish that if we make this God, which has brought the gospel of corruption, the gospel of prosperity, it does no good except lining the pockets of these men. Now they are standing with the big box like this, fat cats. They talk about themselves. When I was in school, I did this. Oh, I prayed for one sister. She got 400 million naira. And she gave me, she, she, she gave me something. When I went to the US, they gave me $10,000. He is a scoffer. The same thing when it comes to Austria, when I was, they, they, you tell them when I, went, when I was in Austria, they gave 20,000. One man just came in from nowhere. He said, Pastor, I know you live, you are an anointed of God. So you will be challenging somebody. He even advised some one man to sell his car and give him the money. How can people be, if you are a man, you are a father, then it's a tragedy that you are a father. Because you are a disgrace. You are asked to sell the budget of the family that helps you to go and buy things. When your child is sick, you take him to the hospital, say, sell that car. If God loves this man so much, why does he not give you money? Why are you looking for money every day? God will bless you. If God blesses, let him bless you first. Why are you preaching about money? People must ask this man of God. I asked one man, uh, God bless you, said yes. Thank you, God has blessed me enough. I live in the content. I live with godly contentment. What I have is what I, I use. I don't use anything that I don't have. So you cannot come and say God wants to bless you. One man, he came, he said I'm a prophet. Because we are talking about scoffers. They are now living in flesh. Spirituality has been replaced with carnality. These are now spiritual activity without Christ inside. Christ is locked outside. Holy Spirit has been chased away. No, no, no place, no place for you, Holy Spirit. We know how, we know what we want. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 1. Many women will be gathered unto one man. We just need your name. The women they were talking about were churches. It's not woman is a woman. When you see women, it's church in the Bible. This is the church. When you see the two, when you see two women being mentioned in the Bible, is the Old and the New Testament. But I'm not going to digress today. For those that are coming to Austria, we will we'll have those discussions, showing us more of those things, so that we can give as much knowledge on some of these things as we can. Brethren, if we come to such an extent that a man comes said, I want you to, I want your ministry to grow. Say, sir, I want your ministry to grow. Now, he first asked me, say, who is your, your papa? I said, the Lord Jesus Christ. Who is your mentor? I said, the Lord Jesus Christ. So how? I mean a physical person. I said, he is the one who called me. He didn't say, this one is your papa. I don't get anybody who born me for spirit now. Why do you want me to give me another father? If you want to be a mentor, it's okay. But spiritual father. So if you come and call me father, I have got a spiritual father. It means the man that I'm calling a spiritual father becomes your grandfather. Is God your grandfather? Is God your grandfather? This is where all this nonsense is coming. We don't make doctrine with one Bible verse. That issue of people saying, ah, my, my spiritual father, uh, my this, this. 
let them do it whoever want to do it. God said, don't call anybody father. He was not referring to your biological father. Don't go and say, my father, ah, brother John, good evening. I did not say that one. Your father is your father. Greet him. Daddy, good evening. Papa, good evening. He was, he was saying to these Pharisees, come, my son. I bless you, my son. These are the ones that we are talking about, the Pharisees, the ones that were standing on the, on the, on the street, on, on the corners of the street. I bless you, my son. When they are fasting, the mouth will be white like somebody was eating sand. So that everybody knows they are fasting. That's why he said, whatever we give with the right, let not the left know about it. Why should we talk about these things? The man said, sir, he wants to grow the ministry. I said, no, my job is to teach, to preach, to do the things that he asked me to do. Growing the ministry is not my problem. I'm not here to grow the ministry. I did not come and say, hey, come to say, come to say, come to say. My job is to preach his word without fear or favor. Rebuke sin, mention sin, all those things must be mentioned. Prepare people for the judgment which is coming. The judgment of God is coming upon the earth. Will you be standing right with him? This is where we say, flee from the coming wrath. Flee from the coming wrath. Prepare yourself for the, for the day of the Lord which is coming. It's not a day of joy. The cry of the warrior angel, the Lord, when he talks about this day, he cries because it's not a day of joy. You will build houses, you will not stay in those houses. You will buy hitches, you will not, you will not drive in those cars. Everything will come to naught. This, your money, I have for 300,000 in the bank, it's not going to save you. That's when you see there's a God who rules in the affairs of men. Everything will be turned upside down within an hour. That's when you see, say, God, where do I start from? Because you put your hope on that molten calf. You put your hope, the, the earrings that you are giving in, this is your money. Seed to the man of God. Now he's driving a Mercedes Benz, 370,000. Is it not obscene? Okay, if he needs a good car that does not break down every day now and again, buy one for 20,000. It's not out of this world. He buys a private jet. I want to go and evangelize. Do they don't even evangelize? These are the private jets when they get sick, they'll go to another country for treatment. They go especially to India where there are pagan, pagan societies, very good doctors or to Cuba. They just go there one, two weeks. Ah, oh, Papa, it's good me. I don't get sick. Yeah, because they're getting private treatment. This is hypocrisy. We are talking about the scoffers. We are talking about the judgment come, the, the, um, that the Lord's coming is not an intentional. It is not a delay that is delaying because he wants to delay. He's trying to give us a chance to come to him. Let us look at something. Jude, the book of Jude before Revelations is where we find Jude. I do not want to say the second book of Jude because I'll find one person going to the book of second book of Jude. Jude is only one chapter. Praise the Lord. Jude chapter 1, verse 18. How that, how that they told you that they should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own and what that mockers. Let us go and drink beer. Let us go and follow women. Let us go and do these things, follow our careers. Where is he? I'm going to do my PhD. It is okay. God has got his job, each dog has got its way. When the day of the Lord comes, you will see that piece of paper is not going to save you. I was in an argument with one pastor, man of God. He started talking about uh, theology. He says, forget about theology. Forget about the nonsense you call theology. All those useless titles that people, senior archbishop, archbishop, all those titles, general overseer, they are not in the Bible. They could be used for administrative purposes. Right, reverend, the laity, this, they are useless jargon from, from theology. This is a doctrine of the, of the devil. Now people are saying, if you don't go to a theological school, you will not be ordained as a pastor. Which school did Apostle Peter go to? Even on the day of Pentecost, ha, this man did not go to school. Where did he get all this knowledge? Bible school, 
is even unbiblical when you look at the Bible. It's even unbiblical. You are trained. If God sends somebody, yeah, it's good that I did it, but I did not do it out of, like, to improve my thing. I respect my calling than that piece of paper. I don't even know where it is. Even if I find it today, I don't need it. Because God has opened this gospel by revelation to me, go and teach my children. I cannot keep a piece of paper that probably one artist signed. People are now saying, ah, oh, I'm calling myself, I'm a professor. They don't even know what holiness is. That's what makes me sad. Say, sir, you know, every church has got doctrine. There is no doctrine in the Bible. The only doctrine is the doctrine of the Lord Jesus Christ. Full stop. No discussions. He said, uh, sir, we can, um, you, you can just look at um, the, the gospel of your ministry. I said, we don't have a gospel. The gospel we follow is for the Lord Jesus Christ. Is what you are preaching, what Apostle Paul preached, Jude preached, John the Baptist preached. Even if you are called in the middle of the night, we know you were called alone. But we can vet. We know the syllabus now. We've got the Bible. Is it the standard you are using to preach? If you cannot come in and condemn sin, how does holiness come? I asked one person, four master's degrees in theology. I said, how do you get holiness? I said, uh, holiness. They started talking nonsense. Imagine with all such schools. That piece of paper does not give imputed righteousness. You will get righteousness from the devil. The ones which Adam saw these fig trees, a form of righteousness, which Isaiah 64 verse 6 said, your own righteousness is like a filthy rag. We don't say don't go to school. If you go to intensify your knowledge without being indoctrinated, the problem is indoctrination. If you are not careful, many well-meaning brethren, sisters of God were called Say, you must go to the Bible school. They, they came out corrupted. Now they cannot even condemn homosexuality. They say, no, God said, do not judge. You are a hypocrite. That's who you are. Sodom and Gomorrah were dis destroyed for this one. You are a scoffer. You are a scoffer. You and Aaron are the same. If you think God put you there, then why not say, I'm waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ? People are saying, this your kind of gospel does not bring members. They are not looking for members. They are souls. Stop calling them members for crying out loud. They are souls. Members are your customers. Souls are the property of God. Because if I start looking at as members, and I say, oh, how much am I going to get? Oh, 200 people. If everybody gives me 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 you know, 20,000, I'll raise it. Or give 50, 50, 50 give 50 euros, 50 euros. I've got a lot of money already. Is that what you want as Christians? To see the souls which the Lord Jesus Christ went to, this, went to the cross for as an opportunity to make money. People are working their fingers to the bone. Some, they cannot longer keep their fingers straight like this. There we are. You just take without even defeat. No, let us forget that you know, you know what I'm going to use the money for. Let us forget about it. What about the fear of God? When do you use that money with a clear conscience? Say, God, if you come now, will you ask you, say, God, do you know what you are doing? Do you feel what people go through? It's not everybody who sits in the office comfortable with the fresh air like this. Even if you do, still it's not a reason. When people are investing, they're investing in the kingdom of God. They want the gospel of God to move forward. We are still talking about these scoffers. We saw the devil is the biggest scoffer. He started in the book of Genesis chapter 3. When he went to Adam, to Eve, he was scoffing at God. He said, Eve, Eve unfortunately was found at the tree. She was not, she was not found somewhere. It was Adam who was not there. It was Adam who was not there. He said, hey, did God truly say this tree? That tree is this, is this gospel of Obono, this gospel of the stomach. This is the perverted doctrine. Let me show you something so that I show you this was a perverted doctrine of the stomach. 
Okay, off to Second Corinthians chapter four. I'll just show you. It. This is in passing, so that we know. Why Eve was deceived by the devil? That snake that you see when you read in the Revelation, Revelation chapter twenty, verse two, right? Let me quickly check, so that I can explain with. Um, yeah, Revelation chapter twenty, verse two. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, Satan, and bound him for. You remember. The old serpent, the devil, Satan, when God is talking about the CV of the devil, he is a liar and the father of all lies. He is a murderer and the father of all murderers. So what am I trying to say? The snake that you saw, that thing that, that was a physical action with spiritual repercussions. There is a lot of things that went wrong spiritually altogether. When the Lord said, when said, let there be light, there was darkness. We need to be um, open up our ears and understand this one very well. It's not theology. By revelation, you may, you may be able to understand. When you say darkness and light, it's representing the two systems that we have. The gospel of the Antichrist and the gospel of Christ. Let me show you. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse, yeah, verse 5. Uh, let me start from 4. Ah, from 3, praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Praise the Lord. If this gospel, the gospel of Christ, the gospel of heaven, the gospel of eternity, the gospel of holiness, the gospel of righteousness, righteousness is the benchmark of entry into the kingdom of God. If it's hid, it's hid into those that are lost. For in whom the God of, of this world has blinded the minds of them which believeth not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. See now. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them who believe it not. Now he's saying here, lest the light of the glorious gospel of life. Let's see the next now. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants, but Christ Jesus. Six, for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness had shined in our hearts to give the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ Jesus. What does the Bible mean? Apostle Paul was standing on Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. Let there be light. Now he said, God commanded light to come. And light came. God did not say, come out. No, light appeared, darkness fled. These are the people, these coffers. These coffers, okay, let us explain a little bit why we are saying about this thing, about the devil being a scoffer. Before you miss me here. The devil is a scoffer. He went, he mocked, he was mocking God by coming to lie. Why did uh, Eve agree to this gospel? She agreed that tree was a tree of poison. It was a poisonous, it was a tree of death, but they drank poison. They accepted the, the gospel of the Antichrist. This was the gospel of the Antichrist. They said the tree of life and knowledge. When you read the Lord Jesus Christ in the book of Revelation, say you will hear the tree of life. When he went to preach for the souls that were in captivity, he went and said, Ah, Adam, have you seen me? Say, Yeah, I was the tree of life. Isaiah, have you seen me? Say, Yes. He said, Unto us, he told you, you were talking about me. Abraham, when he said, God shall provide the lamb, you were talking about me. Prophet Jeremiah. All these things, why they did not know the whole Bible. I'm going to bring a teaching where we'll be asked questions. Preaching is usually a one way thing. That's why I prefer to do it more in a teaching format so that we can give as much information as we can biblically, which you can prove. That's why we encourage you to be writing notes. We're encouraging you, we encourage you to be like the Bereans. Bereans, Acts chapter 17 from verse 10, the way of good courage. They were good-natured. They were right. Search the scriptures. 
Pastor, the thing that you said I did not get them. Can you please tell me? Can you please explain it? That is Christianity. Not that when it comes, oh, Holy Ghost fire. If I preach this gospel, I must be able to defend the things that I preach. The only thing that I don't take is foolish questions. I will not get into foolish discussion. That brings strife. But it's your legitimate reason. As mm -hmm. long as it's part of doctrine, yes, you can ask. Why not come and ask? It is your legitimate right because you are eating. You cannot say, I can eat a half done meal because um, I cannot question, Mama, you, you, the, 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 the way you made fufu today is bad. If you question, and you say you are not questioning, you are just putting it out so that she knows. There is no rebellion there. It is well within your legitimate right because you are here to eat from the hand of God. If you feel we can help each other understand. So this coughing started with the devil. That's where man got this gospel. That's why this rebellious nature of believing anything that comes from the devil. It is easy to believe the devil than to believe our Lord Jesus Christ. Even in the days of Noah, scoffers were there. When is water going to come? Just imagine Noah. 110 years building the ark. People say, this man is a mad person. Building the ark. The scoffers were laughing. You said rain is coming. Ha! Look at this mad man. One person went, built with him two, three weeks, said, Noah, I'm not mad, though. I'm not crazy. They went. This is where we are today. The scoffers think the Lord Jesus Christ is going to take ages to come. I'm sorry to disappoint the scoffers. God is coming and is coming soon. He is not coming now. He is not coming soon. He is now. He said, I am coming now. Now is the time. Psalms chapter 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor seated in the seat of the conflict. We are hearing this corner. This corner, this, this scoffers are people who mock God. Everything that God stands for. Are you sure you want to contribute money for church? You want to buy a projector for church? How? Oh, you're a mad person. There's a new shoe which came out in session now that you will be called a scoffer. It's a spirit of covetousness. You don't buy because you have. Those that are giving are not giving because they have. They want the work of God to move. Because if you die with those things, they become your, they become your God. You may not make it because you were busy, you, you were busy um, collecting all this world things. First uh, Peter, yeah, first Peter chapter 2, verse 15. First Peter chapter 2, verse 15. Praise the Lord. I like Apostle Peter because his experience is very enriching. In the beginning, he was not very wise, but he became of age and he became, um, okay, sorry, not first Peter, first John. First John, first John, I read in Jesus' name. First John, chapter 2, verse 50. Laugh not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all, the Bible is already defining the world. He that committed sin is of the devil. The devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he may destroy the works of God. So if you are still a scoffer, you are sinning willfully against what God is. Um, This message of holiness, say, ah, I'm living, I'm living in holiness. If for can
of time. We are praying. Oh, this man. Sam, when you are praying, you cry. There's nothing wrong with crying. Even if I may not cry, there is nothing wrong. It's the first thing that signifies a person is living. Matters can signify, matters know this thing. Once a child is given, the first thing, if the child don't cry, they beat the child for the cry, child to cry, are waiting upon the Lord. The Lord has not delayed his coming. The Lord is giving us an opportunity to stand once more in his to make it right. We do not know when your tomorrow is going to come. Tomorrow may never come. If your tomorrow never comes, what will become of you? I want you to be asking yourself this question. If the Lord Jesus Christ today, will you make it? If it is the sinners, the hardcore sinners that are living in secret sin, meaning you have committed a sin, you just want to remove the commitment. God, whatever the, what that I have committed, your heart is desperately wicked. You don't even know your own heart. Many have been told by the Lord, you don't know your, your, your own. So if you understand your heart, you can live in the city and have a rude shock. Does the Lord Jesus Christ know you? I know you, but I don't have anything to offer you. That I will tell, and I'll continue talking about it. I don't have heaven to offer you. I'm not going to persuade you. you say, ah, my sister, I can stand with you. I can do all I can. But if God has said, tomorrow, my sister, this is what I'm going to do for you. If I don't make it through the night, what are you going to do? Your hope has failed you. Cursed be you because they've trusted in a human kind. Second Timothy chapter four, verse eight. It says, henceforth there is laid up crown for me of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto also that also love is appearing. If you are waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ to appear, there is a crown. We have got to fight this fight of faith, to fight a good fight of faith. Finished our course. Keep the faith without being shaken. Why is it important, brethren? I have seen ministers of God there. Are there is a great perversion. In one old building like this, there are four churches. Four churches competing, the one who are playing drums, one are this is say, How do you, they even do it? It's about power. None of them preach holiness. They said, No, we preach holiness. That's what they say. But I always tell them, at times they bring me down from their pulpit. They start complaining, Ah, time, time. They spend time on things that do not matter to brethren. If they use the time, like two hours, for a proper teaching where brethren can get solid food and know why they are coming to church. We are not a social gathering, brethren. I've got to keep reminding us these things. We are not a social gathering. We are gathered unto the Lord. We are gathered unto the the Lord of Lords, the King. I was whiling up time. If you are whiling up time, then you joined the wrong forum. If you are here, we are here to make heaven. That is the primary business why we are being gathered like this. 
Brethren, I want you to understand this thing. The Lord loves you. Don't give yourself to the ears that are itchy. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, they shall heap to themselves teachers with itchy ears, enticing word. Receive, I receive. What are you receiving? I receive, come and see the man of God is the one who is receiving. I want to support orphans. He and his wife are the orphans. They are building hospitals. They are building universities where the poor people that contributed to those schools can no longer afford to go. Say, no, we, are, we afford to pay teachers, so we need money. When they were building these colleges, they were not told you will not pay. So we can see the scoffers. They are doing these things. The Lord said, you, you did these things and you saw me quiet and you think I'm like you. You will have the last laugh. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming much sooner than we think. Everything in heaven as we talk is ready, brethren. I have seen, I have been given the grace to see the preparations in heaven. Everything in heaven is set. Lines of tables, gold colored, all those things. Oh, it's a beauty. I pray that all of us will make it in Jesus' name. Don't miss it, because if you do, all your sacrifices will be in vain. Many are going to the church, physical churches today, because they don't want to disappoint the pastor. It's not about the pastor. This is a personal and very selfish journey. It's about your soul. You are not going this, ah, my sister, you are, you, are my, you are my good sister. Only if you are walking with the gospel. I preached this message. I have talked with pastors. At times, they don't quite like the messages. But I told them I've got an obligation. The blood is not upon my hand. The Lord said, preach the word. Don't fear any man. I've told them, I'll stand. I'm good enough if, even if they wanted to attack me, they wouldn't. They wouldn't be tempted to do it. I'm big already. So they will have to think twice. Even though the anointing of the Lord will protect me. So brethren, if you are going to church, don't go because the pastor is there. Go because the spirit of the Lord is upon the person who is leading you. Many well-meaning Christians have been diverted. They are in spiritual bondage. They don't believe the word of God they will say, ah, that's what my pastor said. If you hear another pastor talking about something, come, we open the scriptures. I'm happy to talk to the pastor. As long as he calls himself pastor, let us open the Bible. But one thing I don't allow pastors to do is to make doctrines with one Bible verse. It's a perfection. As long as there's one, it's written once in Bible, you cannot make doctrine out of it. So I'm happy to answer questions, I'm here to walk us through rope tied around their neck. They're like donkeys being tied on a rope. The tree is a religious, it's a, it's a church, it's a religious system, which people are celebrating Easter in church, which has nothing to do with us. These are traditions of men. People are oh, Easter. Did you say, did Lord Jesus Christ say that I was born on this day? Should we not be celebrating every Sunday like we are doing? Why do you want to wait for one day to celebrate? Why don't you celebrate him for every day of brought into the traditions of men? Men have deceived you. Men have been telling you, no, Jesus was born on this day, the Christmas that you talk about, all those things, these are paganism that is being coming in church. Even birthday, even if you know my birthday, it will not be celebrated in this ministry. It's a perversion. Only Jesus Christ will be celebrated in this ministry. 
We don't celebrate men. What is man that God said better day? Uh, uh, this thing, what's so special about that better day? Is, it, is Jesus Christ not special? People are big, say, no, I want to see where, if we can give the man of God this. Yet we have got pastors who are walking barefooted in Africa. Evangelists who need a bicycle, which costs ordinary 100 euros. We cannot support those people. Buying a pastor a suit when he's got 15 suits already. Papa, I want to bless you with a car. How many missionaries could you have supported? Would you would have won 5,000 and so on. You are busy, you want to please men. You want to be in the good books of pastor. Pastor do not have heaven to offer. I was not called to please men. When the Lord called me several years, I rejected, I said, no, I'm not going to be a preacher man. I come from a very different background. I wanted to remain with the academia. I said, this is what I want. This is what I enjoy doing. I enjoyed living in that kind of life. It was a new concept for me. I cannot stand because one, I knew the Christians are not disciplined. They have got a kind of foolishness. The moment they accept Lord Jesus Christ, they become foolish. I was said one last week when I read um, a man who was converted in South Africa. Now he's saving, truly saving the Lord Jesus Christ. He said it was easy for him in Satanism to sleep with women in the church. What an indictment. Children of God, where are the values? A woman of God in a ministry, you come and fornicate where you're supposed to be in the presence of God. He said the children of God, the children of the world just drink smoke, say, oh, this one, they cannot be tricked. God said, I'm sending you into the world. Be wise as the serpent, gentle as the dove. Where is the wisdom? Where is the wisdom? You come, certainly fully say, ah, no, God. You cannot allow, ah, uh, you know, uh, my sister, let us go just to the hotel. I had one great, he calls himself Bishop. I think he's from Finland, somewhere in Finland. He said, no, in Norway, sorry, in Norway. He said to one sister, let us just go to the hotel. You know, nobody will know it. This man was being called a powerful man of God. Just imagine. Is he not a child of devil? Is he not a child of devil? A, a, a man, he are called to preach in a ministry. A sister has been asked to drive you. A sister has been asked to drive you. Now we are saying, no, it doesn't matter. Say, my God, what has gotten into the children of God? If you meet such a demon, why don't you stand up? These are spiritual hooligans. They are not Christians at all. Things can happen, men can fall. But not to come and say, this is the sister I was going to drive you. They are thinking, you are a father. This man was the uh, age of this woman's father. You are a father. Instead of guiding you, my daughter, I want you to be like you. I want you to be strong in the Lord. No. He is thinking of something else. This gospel of the flesh. You see where it leads. Ah, flesh, flesh. Say, no, the man of God is anointed. You call it anointing, a perversion. Such men should be exposed. They should not be allowed anywhere near our well meaning sisters. Let them be exposed. This is what this man wanted to do. If you give me the opportunity, I will preach on them on Facebook. That I will do. They need to be exposed. Once you come, genuinely say, yes, this man, that's what he said. Yes, we'll expose him. We'll leave him no place to hide. Mm -hmm. He cannot come and, and be eating the people that the Lord has entrusted you to raise up. They are like your daughters. And before you are thinking, you are thinking of something else. Where is the fear of God? 
And this man come, that said the Lord. Which, which Holy Spirit will be talking that one? You come, now we are talking about Holy Spirit. Two minutes ago, you are talking this to this woman. If she's a loose, loose woman, because they hear, ah, it's a man of God. And my sisters, I have got an appeal to my people. They are always the largest victim. They want prophecy too much, prophecy too much. Prophecy is going to end. The word of God is going to stand. Don't stand on prophecy. Let no man come and prophesy. Ah, my sister, I'm, I, I'm going to prophesy to you. The, God, the Lord is going to do this, this, this for you. If it is a true prophecy, let God come and tell you the secret things in your life. Don't be told, don't be entertained by these coffers. When is he coming? Let us just enjoy ourselves. You say enjoy. If you die in that state, you are condemned eternally. You will burn forever. If people are saying the biblical Lord to the kings of the old, they are all burning in hell as we talk. What about you? Imagine how many thousands of years before the Lord Jesus Christ was born physically, they were still burning there. And there you are. You think you're able to stand it? Go away from prophecy. The greatest prophecy is knowledge. The knowledge is the food of God. The word of God is the food. This is the food that nourishes your soul. Stand on the word. Stop being entertained by prophecy. I see prophecy. I see those things, but I don't come and prophesy. I wouldn't do it. I can only come and tell you a secret thing. Not come and say, ah, I know the number of your ID. It's called this, this, this. So what? After that, what? If a stray bullet just hits your head like this, from there, straight to hell. Of what use is that prophecy to you? Prophecy is going to end because when the Lord Jesus Christ comes, are you going to prophesy to the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you going to say, rabba, 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 this, this? Hey, get away from here. I am the one who made you. What are you going to tell him? Instead, you want to learn from him. So all those things, it is only the word of God that is going to stand. Trust and believe in the word of God. He honors his word more than his name because he is the word. Do not forget this thing. When you hear, ah, my sister, I want to prophesy, or I need even committing I don't know, acts of rebellion at the time. Because they are coming, put a lot of pressure. We met one man here in Nintu. He said to me, oh, mama, uh, you need to bless the prophet. I said, he said, oh, but sir, why are you answering saying you cannot come and separate what God is doing? We just met you now, right? Nobody knows you anyway. So it means you don't have a significance. He said, ah, so I said, yes. Don't allow scoffers. Even if it means, if you insist to say, hey, this is not a spiritual matter. Remember the Lord Jesus Christ when he was beating in the people from the, in the temple. Did he preach to them? There are some people who, who do not understand a perfect language. That's why the Lord said, Peter said, hey, Lord, why are you, he said, this one, you don't need to preach to them. When you give them a small beating, they understand, then you preach to them. So at times it's important knowing the times and the seasons where we are. We don't encourage any form of rebellion, any form of um, punitive measures. But when you meet such hooligans coming or pretending to be in the name of Jesus Christ, then you need to sit up straight. Watch very carefully that you are not taken for right. Many of them have taken power from the West Africa. That's where every one of them, they've got their spiritual fathers from there. Another one started as a prophet. He became a reverend. From a reverend, he became a prophet. From a prophet, he becomes a brother. From a brother, he is now a general officer. Where are all those titles coming from? So you can see another one was a pastor. He was promoted to a prophet. People are having celebration, yet people are going to hell every day. This is the man who has not preached any message that somebody will cry for their soul, say, God, I'm a sinner, have messed upon me. 
you are coming, say, ah, oh, pasta, pasta is good. Good for what? They are drinking from the well of hell. They are drinking poison. This is poison. As long as we're not being told to repent, as long as we're not being told to make it right with the Lord. The Lord told me, preach my truth, my son. Preach my truth. He told me, preach my truth. If you walk with me, if you persevere until the end, I will promise you heaven. I was not promised heaven. It's how I'm going to end my life, how it's going to determine by his grace. None of us is promised, but we are walking on a journey which we have got hope. It's not by might, it's not by power. God, I've made my mind to save you. I've, I'm dying, I've died to the world. I want to live for you. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. The life that I live is the life of Christ. Are you showing some fruits, the fruit of repentance? Matthew chapter 3, verse 8. Are you showing the people that you are a new creature? Are you a new person? Can people trust you? Can you examine yourself and see where you are? If you go to bed now and do not wake up today because you have joined the scoffers, he is not coming anytime soon. He has delayed his coming. He's not coming anytime soon. They said it 2,000 years ago. The Lord is not coming. It's okay. Let us enjoy. Enjoy. If you drop dead at that particular point, where do you think you're going to make it? Do not joke with your heaven. There are no two chances in heaven. Those that we hear that went to hell and came back, Oh, Lord has mercy upon us. Most of them are going back to where they were shown. God is not a specter of persons. He had given them the grace to come and explain, say, this place is the real place. It's out of his love, out of his compassion. To show us this. I said, God, if you are to give me the grace to show it to me and come back, I'll be happy. But I, like you, I'm also not promised. If I go there, I will come back. So none of us is promised. So the trick is let us live every day like it's our last. That's the only thing I can tell us, brethren. Every day that we live, let it be like your last. It is good you go to bed angry. There was a time when somebody made me very angry. Some people made me angry. Uh, one of my sisters, Sister Lovett, who is very close to me, says, ah, stop. <laughs> You must forgive us. Say, the say the, sun, the, the Bible says, do not let the sun go down your anger. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Then it was cloud covered for about four or five days. As the devil administered, you see how the devil comes in. He came in and said, hey, the Bible said, do not let the sun, there's no sun now. So I found a justification. There is no sun. So you are, you are right to be angry. But if I had fallen in that state, oh, you would be hearing stories that your brother, we saw him in hell. That, those are the dangers. God is not a respecter of person. That is in the ministry is no guarantee that I'm going to make it. The only thing that can guarantee that I'm standing right with him. I will hold on to the faith, fight the good fight, the good fight of faith. Hold it, enjoy it until the end. That's when it's like, my prayer is, our prayer is, God, give us the grace to hold it until the end. Because if we don't, if we don't, I live on that hope. Whether it's coming to manifestation, whether it will manifest at the end of age, I do not know. I trust God. My prayer is, God, you do not bring me from, you do not call me from the world to come and perish at your feet. You did not call me to come and perish at your feet. May you give me the grace to stand. May you give me the grace to work for you tirelessly. May you give me the grace that I need to succeed in doing the assignment which you have given me. That is my prayer. I pray this prayer all the time. You didn't bring me to come and fail in this ministry. Many are asking today, where is their God? Are they truly saving a living God? We don't look at the numbers. We move by faith. We move with faith. What God has ordained, no man can oppose. Who can say it and come to pass when the Lord has not commanded it? So brethren, I want us to be strong. Those that are coming to Austria, I wish you a very safe flight. 
who will be waiting for you in Germany. Those that are unable to come because of one or two circumstances, we pray that the Lord will make a way next year for you. The Lord loves all of us. May we stand. May we stand. The level of provocation is so high at the moment, we need to be spiritually sensitive. There are people who are picking offense over nothing. Magnify it from a small entity. It's magnified to be a big elephant bull. From nothing to something. We need to be careful. Let love prevail. Perfect love casts out fear. When we walk in love, in love of Christ, I think all of us, the Lord will give us the joy as we'll be meeting here. I pray that so shall we be meeting in his presence. They say, oh, you remember the times that the Lord will say, my children, I was with you. Even when this message was being given, I was trying to straighten you. There are sisters that give me a message from the Lord. The Lord was trying to encourage me. I was so discouraged in the last few days. The Lord gave one sister a message. Just want to encourage. He was trying to encourage me. At times, I don't feel his presence when things are very rough. But he said, when, I, when you do not feel my presence, you will be on my shoulders. So I pray that we will hold through. Don't let anything distract you. We have come so far to give up now. We have sacrificed all we have, brethren. All we have. The time that we are giving to this ministry, it's more than any amount of money that you can give. The time only that you have sacrificed. Even the time my own brother, Pastor Siwa, has sacrificed in the ministry. I pray to the Lord that many of us will see him for the first time on Wednesday. May the Lord bless us all in Jesus' name. Over to you, Allah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. Thank you, Pastor Hope, for one of the encouragement. I want to pray for pray for let us pray or open our hearts and pray and ask God for God to help us running grace to not get tired we should always get that strength that extra strength from from above let us pray for God to give us that strength from